Welcome to Module 3, Unit B, Sources of Evidence, on the Evident Course. So, we'd like to present you with uh, various uh, scenarios, uh, as we've already covered in Module A. So, you're a, a senior civil servant, and you have responsibility for coming up with a new nutrition strategy to com combat stunting. Uh, or Scenario 2, you work in the Ministry of Health, and you're advising the Minister on how to produce this nutrition strategy, or you're in an independent academic use unit supporting the Minister of Health. What types of information might we bring to bear on the problem? Well, in this particular graphic we can see on the left-hand side the type of information that could help to inform the option, and on the right-hand side we can see the sort of study designs that are well suited to providing the information. Some of these are more familiar than others, so for example uh, benefits or uh, positive effects, effectiveness, uh, could be established through randomised controlled trial studies, and if they're not available, through interrupted time series or controlled before and after studies. As we previously said, randomised controlled trials are not a good source for potential harms, um, because unless uh, an adverse effect is um, frequently reported, it will not occur often enough um, for it to be picked up in the small, relatively small population of a randomised controlled trial. It may be found um, in larger studies, um, perhaps in controlled before and after studies, um, but typically we would be looking for observational studies. For the cost and cost effectiveness elements of our decision, we look for cost effectiveness studies, otherwise known as economic evaluations. For elements of the option in terms of what we're going to uh, select, um, we may inform that by qualitative studies and those studies that take um, place alongside trials such as process evaluations. And qualitative studies can also help contribute um, the views and experiences of stakeholders and this would also be true of um, large-scale observational studies. So we're inviting you to continue to work on your assigned scenario. Um, we've produced a new worksheet here, where will you get your local information from? And we'd like you to identify uh, sources, particularly uh, local sources, for each type of evidence needed for your decision. Uh, and we'd like you all to feed back from your scenario. And uh, again, we'd like you to um, establish the extent of uh, similarity across the three scenarios, that is whether um, common uh, data sources are required um, or the particularities of a scenario where um, specific sources are only required by that scenario. And we'd like you to um, conclude by reflecting to what extent are these sources already available to you. So do you currently have access to them? We'd also like to give you uh, an opportunity now to, um, to pause this recording and to make questions or comments about um, uh, the availability of local evidence and any problems that you've encountered. In terms of where local evidence can be found, uh, we can use routine health information systems. These often collect data on mortality and burden of disease, uh, health service statistics and health service expenditure are often uh, collected at least at a governmental level if not um, by uh, local and regional agencies. In addition, uh, population data, demographic data can yield information on household conditions, on the general state of health of the population as not presenting to health services and other demographic uh, issues such as for example the, uh, the age and, and gender distribution. Um, uh, and the population pyramid. Other sources, um, research studies uh, conducted locally, uh, studies of consumer views, market research, um, satisfaction surveys, um, and also a formal cost effectiveness evaluations. And these are important because cost effectiveness is very co context specific, and so an economic evaluation in one country although it may tell you the ingredients of um, a cost evaluation in another country, 
will be unable to tell you the particular values to use. In searching for local evidence, we still want to be as transparent and systematic as we can, uh, mirroring how we would handle global evidence. So we should therefore avoid using local evidence selectively. It's very tempting to just use that evidence that supports one's own particular case or initiative. Uh, but we would encourage you to uh, include all important data to contribute to the decision-making process. So where do you start when you're trying to find routine collected data? Well, um, health information departments of ministries of health will often collect this data and may make it available through printed reports or web reports. National statistics offices will often provide demographic data from either a census, or if these take place uh, rarely, then from uh, population estimates. Local health authorities will be able to contextualize uh, national patterns um, within their local uh, health constituency. Local research institutions may have conducted a range of routine and opportunistic uh, surveys and evaluations uh, in their area. Uh, NGOs uh, may well have collected data to support a particular initiative uh, or a funding application. And um, uh, multilateral agencies such as WHO um, or um, partnership organisations may well collect data at a country level. And then finally, um, we may get data from commercial databases um, such as, for example, pricing for drugs. Um, or the availability of drugs, although this often has to be negotiated. In terms of uh, international database sources, um, there are some useful sources maintained by the WHO, the World Bank um, Organization, and the uh, HRH Global Resource Center, and I'll be showing you examples of the sort of data that they hold in the subsequent slide. So here is the WHO data. You can see that it uh, uses a number of Millennium um, Development Goals uh, on which to um, present uh, key data. Uh, and uh, we've highlighted uh, a particular one here of relevance to the topic of stunting. World Bank data, uh, stronger on the demographic uh, components, but also on general uh, societal characteristics. Um, uh, you can uh, devise profiles by countries, you can make comparisons between countries, um, and you can uh, specify what data you'd like to access. Uh, the uh, HRH Global um, Resource Centre um, has uh, material on the organisation of health, particularly human resources for health, um, and uh, has uh, reports uh, available by country. Other sources, um, uh, we've talked about PubMed as a source of um, general uh, clinical studies, but we can limit searches to a specific country for local data, um, and we can also use uh, health services research hedges, which is a special part of PubMed for data on qualitative studies or administrative databases. Again, <coughs> I'll be showing you an example of this shortly. African Index Medicus is a, a regional specific database of uh, literature sources. And PDQ Evidence has an interest in health services and systems, and so compiles literature um, related to those aspects. So again, to take these in turn, You'll notice from this Health Services Research menu, this is not the general PubMed menu, um, so do check out the specific URL. Uh, we've entered a very broad search, Ethiopia and Nutrition. We've selected the button that mark, is marked Qualitative Research. We've specified a broad sensitive search until we see how much literature there is out there. And then we um, hit the Go button and we uh, see the results. So in this case, specifically from Ethiopia, we have 163 um, articles recorded on the area of nutrition. Of course, we can use more specific terms as well. 
Um, so on uh, African Index Medicus, this is coverage of uh, exclusive African journals that don't make it into PubMed. So for example, the South African Journal of Clinical Nutrition um, uh, yields a uh, study here uh, in Ethiopian women to do with um, their folate deficiency. PDQ evidence um, provides uh, uh, information about health systems and usefully it links individual studies to systematic reviews. Again we have uh, specified a country along with our general topic. We could use specific topics as well and you'll see that there's a small number of studies uh, uh, identified for Ethiopia and these are linked to particular systematic reviews. Other sources, Google Scholar will include local studies, particularly um, uh, operational research from health services that may not have made it into journals. The WHO Library Information System also yields data. Um, so again, taking these in turn, Google Scholar um, combining the topic in the country, so nutrition and Ethiopia, uh, yields uh, various PDFs. In this case, we have them from uh, universities and from the WHO. Um, the WHO uh, Literature Database, um, uh, Library Database, um, will also have reports we may not have been able to identify via other sources. And then finally, you can use your personal contacts to make contact with local researchers to include unpublished study reports and uh, make use of um, health networks or observatories uh, such as these two. Again, we've just put examples up uh, here, um, some of the publications uh, available um, with regard to um, uh, equity and uh, human resources. And um, this, for example, provides information on available training within particular countries. So how do we assess the quality of a data source when we found it? Uh, well, we look at completeness, accuracy, relevance, and timeliness. Um, completeness, the extent to which it covers all the data we require. Accuracy, the extent to which it provides reliable data. Relevance, the extent to which the data is provided at the level that we need it. And timeliness, the extent to which it is current. And so the, the um, interval between data collection and our using the data. And what we'd like you to do is look at some of these sources that we've identified in the previous slides, look for some specific information, and then make an assessment of the source based on completeness, accuracy, relevance, and timeliness. So construct a, a, a table with those and uh, assess, um, uh, assess an individual source against these criteria. In terms of the advantages and disadvantages of these secondary data sources, uh, the advantage is the data is already there, so it doesn't involve data collection. It may save time, although uh, it, you'll spend more time processing it. The data may be easier, easier to uh, carry out quickly, and the sample size is often a large. On the downside, the quality may be poor. It may not be specific to the question you have in mind, and um, you have no control over the sampling um, or, in fact, um, the presence of bias. So um, we've looked at an overall assessment of the quality of data sources. Uh, module 4 um, will later look at the quality of individual articles. So um, we conclude the session by asking if you have any questions or comments about how to find the local evidence. And obviously these can either be uh, answered by the team there or um, forwarded to me for subsequent answering. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the rest of your course.